Hi guys, this is Mark Kirby. This is a lecture for Tuesday, no, Wednesday, October 18th. Uh, electron oracles and configuration. So what is an electron oracle? It is a region of space around a nucleus of an atom, of an atomic of an atom, where an electrons most likely be found. So that right there to the right is a four model. You have your nucleus in the middle, then your electrons and these orbitals that are found around it. This is where atoms make bonds, particularly the outermost shell. The outermost one is called a valence shell. And just of note, electrons tend to travel at 2,200 kilometers per second. So there are four main suborbitals we need to be aware of. Just know the, for now you need to know the order, and it's S, P, D, F. It's based on how the orbitals look in theory. So S is a sphere, P sort of looks like a P, D has a lot of overlapping orbitals, and so does F as well. So S, P, D, F, you will hear this frequently throughout this unit. So in each of the orbitals, there are a possible number of electrons per orbital. So the S orbital has only up to two, P has up to six, D has up to 10, and F has up to 14 orbitals. So now you're going to work on something. You can pause the video so you can work on the assignment that says, or the handout that says electron configurations, and it shows model one called the boarding house. You need to work on this, and then answer the questions on the back of it, and that will lead into our, our continuing our lecture. So get, pause the video and give yourself a chance to do that. Okay, so this is the house, the boarding house, I'm sorry, at different times. And you'll notice there are sunny rooms and pink rooms. Uh, there's a kitchen on the bottom that nobody goes into. And there are certain times, there's also the manager's code for knowing how many people are actually in the boarding house at a specific time. So examine the boarding house diagrams of model one. Match each of the following symbols. So letter A, the dots, that represents the border. So that's Roman numeral three. Uh, letter B is a bunk bed. And letter C is a manager's code. With the 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S1 is a manager's code. So at 5 p.m., going back to that, how many people are in the boarding house? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have a total of eight borders in the boarding house at 5 p.m. Examining, examine the diagrams and figure out which means what. So the floor number versus the type of room, the number of borders. So we're going to indicate what's the floor number. The floor number is a number in the front. Oops, that's bad. One is two. The, the one and the two, those are both the, those are all the floor numbers. The type of room is the S and P, and the number of borders are the numbers that are written sub superscriptly, that means on top. So the two, two, and four, those are the number of borders uh, per room. So the manager of this boarding house is pretty strict. He has certain rules. So you, need to look, you had to look at the models and figure that out. So the boarding house will rent out beds on the first floor first. It doesn't do the second or third. You have to start from the bottom or the up. Borders are only allowed to double up in a bunk when there is an even number of borders or all bottom bunks are occupied. Or if you look at the one is two, the 3 p.m. to 5 p.m., there's no doubling up on a bunk bed until all the bottom bunks are occupied first in that floor or that room, sorry. The next floor of rooms will be open for borders only when blank on the floor below are occupied. And you notice that all the bunks have to be occupied first before you jump up to the next one. The pink floor, the pink room on a floor will be open for borders only when all the lower bunks are occupied in the sunny room. All the bunks or just the sunny room is open. And the answer is B. Second one, all the bunks in the sitting room will 
for the whole article. So here's one I want you to write down in your notes. So provide the manager's code and boarding room design when there are 12 boarders present. So let's create the house. So we got Okay, nothing in the kitchen. So it's whole borders. We're going to start from the bottom. So put a different color. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So based on this, what is the code? If this is the first, second, third floor, this is my S and P rooms. My code is going to be. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and then 3s2. So why did I make y'all do this? Well, there's a total of three rules you need to know. So you use your graphic organizer, continue to fill it out. And then over the next few slides, there are some questions, but you, need, you don't need to write them down, but you need to pay attention and listen to my reasoning for them, for the answers. So based on where a single electron is placed, the lowest potential energy electron in an atom is found at the blank sublevel. So looking at our diagram before, the lowest possible potential energy, if you will, for an electron. So what does that even mean? Well, essentially, What's the lowest sublevel we'll find a board? So the answer is going to be 1s. Electrons will only will occupy a p orbital only after the previous s orbital is half full, the previous s orbital is completely full, or the previous s orbital is empty. So the question is asking, electrons will only occupy a p or a pink room only when what? So for it to go from the S room to the pink room, or the S orbital to the P orbital, we need to have the previous S orbital is completely full. Need to occupy levels with the next highest integer designation only after blank on the energy level below they're occupied. So this question is asking for us to go up to the next level how do we need to be filled up? That means essentially how many orbitals need to be filled up. So to go from the second to the third floor or the second to the third orbital, you need to have all of the orbitals in it occupied. So this relates to our first rule or principle called the off bow principle. Off bow means filling up in general. So the electrons in the ground state are the lowest energy fill for energy lowest energy fill from the least to most energy. So it works from the bottom up. So the lowest energy level would be 1s. Electrons will only pair up in an orbital when there is an even number of electrons in the suborbital and sublevel, or all orbitals in the same sublevel have one electron. So when did they start pairing up? Was it when there was an even number of electrons or orders, or was it when there was at least one in each electron, each one, each bunk bed had somebody in it. So if you notice in 1s2, or the 3 p.m. to 5 p.m., they only paired up once there was one electron in each sublevel first, and then they paired up. So the answer is B. All orbitals in the same sublevel have one electron. So this is Hun's rule. Electrons will only pair up when all of the orbitals at a given energy already have one electron, and then all lone electrons will have an orbital within an orbital have the same spin. So what does that mean? Well, when we're looking at, we're going to see our energy level diagrams we're going to draw. When I say they have the same spin, this is what I mean. So let's say we have three lone electrons or three lone borders. They all need to have the same spin on it. 
this is what I mean. So it can either be up or down, but if you have lone electrons by themselves like this, they're going to be all pointing in the same direction. So the next one's a freebie, just write it down. Pauli exclusion principle. Electrons can only share an orbital if they have an opposite spin. So in one orbital like this, so one suborbital, if there's two electrons here, they have to be in opposite directions. So that's just the, one of the principles uh, for energy level diagrams when we're drawing these out for electrons. So complete the ground state orbital energy level diagram and write out the configuration. So this just means we have to look at our number of electrons in all of these uh, elements, assuming they're ground state. So ground state just means that they're stable, uh, no charge, so they're not positive or negative, they're just what it is. That means your number of protons equal your number of electrons. So sulfur is S, there's a total of 16 electrons or protons. So that means if it's a ground state, it's also 16 electrons. So to get started, we need to start from the bottom and start drawing our arrows. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Notice how I didn't pair off until the end. And so I had one at least one electron need support. So the code's going to be 1, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p4. Notice I do not put any spaces between. I do not put any commas or dashes or whatever. So do not do that. That's not part of the code. Think about this. If I'm telling you that this is the code, how it's supposed to be written, if you write down something else, you're not telling me what you think you're telling me. Like we said with the CSI episode. So silicon is... 14 protons and then also 14 electrons. So same thing, start from the bottom. One, two. So that was Father Pat. Oops. So 14. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. That was it. It's miscounted. So then it's going to be 1s2, 2, 2 S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P2. So notice again, I don't pair up until I have one electron in each. One arrow in each. Beyond is 10 protons, 10 electrons. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oops, that's my mistake. My bad. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So what we saw here, these are energy level diagrams. You need to learn how to draw these on your own. So remember that the atomic number is the number of protons, so if it's going to be stable or ground state, it must have the same number of electrons. So by looking at your periodic table, you should get the number of electrons. So below these are different energy level diagrams for the ground state of nitrogen. So nitrogen symbol is N. It has seven protons, seven electrons. It's a ground state. In each case, indicate whether the answer is right or wrong, and if it's wrong, explain why. So number letter A, you have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. So first of all, there it's wrong because there's only six electrons and you need seven and also here you're not pairing up you need to pair up first so it should have been one two three four five six seven 
letter B is actually okay to use because even though they're not pointing up first, all of these in the 2P suborbital, they're all facing the same direction, so that's okay. So why is the last one incorrect also, like A? So this we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We do have 7 electrons, but notice how here they were pairing up too soon. So the 2P was pairing up too soon. So don't do this because you're breaking the rules for this. So now you'll complete your own electron configurations. Uh, notice that 4S occurs before 3D and 5S before 4D. So make sure you guys don't jump the gun too quick and that you start with uh, the bottom and work your way up. Thank you.